School Board meeting for Tuesday, February 13th, the year 2001. And the first item on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Moving on, we do have a couple of adjustments to our agenda. Um, and uh, if you take a look under communications, um, I'll be adding an item C. Uh, which is an update on state funding, and that will come from uh, Kevin as our financial uh, subcommittee chair. And um, under number eight, superintendent's report, uh, the report from um, the high from uh, Sonia Medina is going to be postponed until um, next month. Um, principal's report, uh, we will hear from the middle school in Pond Cove. Um, this evening, uh, but uh, Pete is unavailable. He's over at the um, school supervising a, an activity over there. So those are the three adjustments, unless anybody has any more that I've missed. <coughs> okay. Um, approval of the January school board minutes. Uh, those are in your packet. Were there any adjustments that needed to be made? Seeing none, I'm going to move on to comments from our high school representative. Good evening. Um, a lot's gone on in the past month and we're really to playoff season for all our sports teams. Um, the boys basketball team is a game tonight against Lisbon and that's going on right now. And the girls um, finished off a kind of more of a building year this weekend with a game against Mountain Valley and it was a close game, so that was real good for them. Um, the swim team had their Western Maine Conference Championships on Friday, and the girls finished first and the boys second. Um, the track team also had their Western Maine Conferences, and they had a strong showing also. And the Nordic team had their Western Maine Conference Championships Saturday and today, and the boys finished second overall and won the classic portion of the race today. Um, and the hockey team is coming up to their playoff season also, so that should be starting soon. Um, the Valentine's Day dance has been rescheduled due to sports conflicts, and it's going to be on March 2nd with a Mardi Gras theme <laughs> and a discount for whoever wears interesting masks. So that's thanks to the junior class. Yeah. And then the SAC um, has worked to organize um, volunteering at the um, Barbara Bush wing of the hospital and students are going to be going to hand out coloring books to the patients there. And the curriculum committee um, will meet tomorrow to discuss changes to the curriculum for not next year, but the following year. So that's about it. Thank that's you. great. Any questions? Any questions? Thank you very much. Welcome. We did get a high school update after all, so that's great. Mm, Thank you. Yeah. Um, and middle school uh, reps, if they if they come, we'll we'll move them into the agenda, and that'll be fine. Um, communications, Tom, you wanna? Yeah, we have um, notification of two teachers. One um, teacher who has been on uh, an extended uh, child rearing leave, um, Ann Holt, uh, will not be returning. And, and as we do with all of our, our, our staff who have served the district for a significant period of time, will be recognized at the end of the year. Um, and um, we have somebody's coming. Sarah, Sarah Carroll. Carroll is coming back <laughs> from a child rearing leave. Um, also, you have an update of a sabbatical. Um, I think it was a it was a it was a real. Um, That's great great update and gave you a real sense of um, what Sue Richmond has been involved with on her sabbatical. Um, and it looks like she's really got some great ideas of how that will affect her classroom and her, her teaching for next year. Mm. Um, on that same note, uh, Nancy and I and Gary uh, Lenoir had an opportunity to meet with um, Jill Bell regarding her sabbatical. And she's really doing some great things in, in looking at uh, technology 
uh, specifically video conferencing and how she can integrate some of that into her classroom. Uh, Nancy had uh, brought up some ideas about how we then can get some of that information out to the rest of the staff and we'll um, hopefully have more information for you at a, at a later meeting on that also. Great. Kevin, um, state funding update? Yes. Um, we're getting uh, another political lesson this year in gamesmanship. Uh, every year that I have been on this board, we have entered the budget season being informed by the state of a proposed cut in general purpose aid. Typically what has happened in the past through significant lobbying efforts, um, that money has been re restored through a hold harmless clause, at which point we all breathe a sigh of relief and go, get on with the business of educating our students, which is what we should be doing. But each year this situation gets a little worse, this year being the worst yet. Uh, you may recall that uh, roughly six weeks ago, the governor informed the state that there was a $200 million uh, deficit in the upcoming budget, followed almost immediately by the news that he was uh, including in his budget a 5% increase in general purpose aid to schools, at which point everyone sat back, breathed that sigh of relief, and our Senate ran out and adopted that without giving it too much thought. The reality is that school districts like Cape Elizabeth will once again lose under the current formula. Uh, we are uh, going to lose roughly $400,000. However, we're not alone. There are 98 other school districts, of the total 285, that will be losing money as a result of this 5% increase in aid to education. I think that gives you an indication of how I'm feeling about this. Regardless, uh, I as a resident uh, and with the support of my peers on the school board have decided we're not going to sit back and just breathe a sigh of relief if we get some money back um, this year. We really need to uh, get into an ongoing uh, effort to uh, change a, a, a definitely flawed uh, formula for allocating uh, education funds throughout the state. Um, and we are working on that. Members, various members of the board, the superintendent are working on that. We have been in contact with our legislators. Um, we are in the process of uh, looking at some of the coalitions that are being formed around the state. And we want to assure you, the public, that we will be doing our very best to recoup this $400,000. Now, there's one thing that's important for people to understand. $400,000 in the scheme of a $13 million budget doesn't really sound like a heck of a lot. But if you realize that 75% to 80% of our budget represents salaries and benefits, then there are items like debt service. There are items uh, like federal and state mandates for special education you come to realize that this board really has very little control over uh, the budget in its entirety, although we do have a significant control over a very small portion of that budget. And that $400,000 represents the pens and pencils portion of the budget that we do have the control over. So it is a significant amount of money and it does have a significant impact on Cape Elizabeth. Again, rest assured that we will do our best. I would challenge the members of this community to take the time, as they do in other situations, to write to the governor, to write to your legislators, and indicate your concerns over this loss of funding and this ongoing every year battle that school districts like ours and 98 other districts have to go through when we should be concentrating on meeting national standards of excellence. Thank you. Thank you. We're gonna move uh, now to our second update from our middle school rep. Uh, I'm sorry, we don't have, we still have a, just our high school. Sarah did represent the middle school a number of years ago. But okay. <laughs> yes, I know. I'm sorry. That happens. We've, hmm. we've had our high school and our middle school is still missing. Okay, we'll, we'll not move on. Did you have additional yeah. updates? Okay, sorry. Um, comments from the public. 
that was sort of a comment from the public, Nancy. Sort of <laughs> putting me back on track again in terms of who fits where. Thank you. Um, we're going to move on to recognition. And we do have um, a person that we would like to recognize this evening. So, George, you'll join me at the podium. As has been the practice for the last couple of years of the school board, um, we try to make an effort to recognize those individuals, either students or faculty, who have accomplished something that uh, seems to be uh, above and beyond or uh, noteworthy as far as an, from an education perspective. We're very fortunate to have an individual um, that teaches in our schools that um, has recently uh, published her second book. So this certificate is in recognition of that accomplishment. And the certificate reads, the Cape Elizabeth School Board presents this award for outstanding accomplishment to Gail Parker in recognition of the publication of your second book, Historical Memoirs, the Osteopathic Hospital of Maine Brighton Medical Center, 1935 to 1998. Through this accomplishment, you serve as a positive role model not only for your students, but for all Cape Elizabeth students. In appreciation for the Cape Elizabeth School Board, signed George Entwistle, Chairman, and Thomas Fursella, Superintendent of Schools. Gail, would you please come up? I would just like to say that it's really exciting to have things like this recognized. You do it usually on your own, particularly something like this, but so many things that teachers do, and it's a wonderful climate when you know you are recognized for those efforts, both within the classroom and outside of the classroom. It, is a, it has been nice to model it for the kids. They've been with me from the very beginning. I've talked to them about it for three, four years of students since the project began. They agonized with me when I sweated whether I could possibly finish it by a deadline, much as they agonized over their homework. They agonized with me this week when I found a typo in the final thing, and I went, ah! And we talked about the fact that, you know, anytime you read it, you still find changes and revision and so forth. So it really is an opportunity to model for them and one that I welcome, and I thank you for recognizing and honoring. Thank you. Thank you. And for those of you, I do have, uh, Gail did lend me a copy, so I'll pass this down if you haven't seen that. It's a copy of it. Okay. We're going to move on to um, superintendent's report. Future direction. Future direction um, action teams. I've included in, in, in draft form in your packet um, some of, from, from the team, some of the potential objectives so you can kind of get a sense of where they are right now. These are um, a first draft. Um, the process as it stands right now, um, community uh, input forums will be held right after the uh, February break in an attempt to get input from parents regarding specifically curricular issues, um, uh, thoughts about um, climate and, and uh, behavioral kinds of things that one of the teams are dealing with and also on staff evaluation, professional development. So there will be a forum um, after, the, after the break. Also the, the team leaders will be meeting with the district leadership council um, to get their own input. Um, all of this will be taken, the plans will be finalized um, with the very specific actions. What you have in front of you are, are the, the objectives. Um, the backbone of that would be um, the very, the, the actions that would take place to implement that, those objectives. Those will be created and go to the future direction planning team um, in April and hopefully the whole thing will be able, will come to the school board in May. So that process is, is moving along. And lastly, uh, just an item on there, a letter that um, 
Kevin has already made reference to that there will be a meeting of the coastal area superintendents um, that I thought you should be aware of. Um, many, many towns that are in the same um, boat that Cape Elizabeth is as far as, as funding loss. Um, and, and it often happens with those, those towns that like uh, Freeport and Yarmouth and those towns that are along the coast. I think what's important to note that um, Kevin mentioned the number of towns that are losing funding. Uh, there are a number of towns um, that just because their enrollments are going up, are, are, they're not losing, um, but are also communities where their valuation has gone up faster than the state average. And although they're not losing, um, if the formula were different, would probably be getting more money than they are. So they might be stable or might be gaining some, but probably the reality is should be gaining more because they have significant enrollment increases. So there will be a meeting of that group um, on Friday. Okay. We're going to move on to the uh, principal's reports. We'll start with Nancy. Um, Peter did call me and he let me know I, I could have my time and his time. <laughs> and um, <laughs> he, he said he didn't want to call you, Tom, because he didn't want to get you started to be in our league <laughs> kind of thing. But um, then I think I also get the time that our students would usually have. So here we go. <laughs> I'm going to wait with some of the announcements and things in case either one of them um, come by. What I'd like to do is just share with you um, hopefully quickly in where we have been with our assessment work that we've done in the last two um, early release days. As I had reported earlier, we're working in content area groups this time. And these are still works in progress. Um, we have another um, early release afternoon on March 14th that will also devote to this. And then the design is that the assessments will be given sometime between March 14th and April 13th. They are being designed to take um, hopefully no more than a class period, sometimes less than that. We are trying to balance this with the fact that we have our standardized testing week of CATs for grades 5, 6, and 7, and MEAs for grade 8, the first full week in March, March 5th through that Thursday, March 8th. So we don't want to devote all of our time to, to testing. Our big lens this year is how do these things inform teaching and learning? And the language arts teachers are trying to um, work through some sort of a listening type activity. They'd really like to measure the art of listening um, and having a hard time coming up with that with something that makes it an assessment and not just a good lesson. So they're still wrestling with that and plan to meet at least one time before the March 14th workshop time um, to work with that. They are probably going to combine it with some sort of a mini writing prompt. Um, and their target grade is grade five. The science teachers have decided what they'd like to do is to um, do some sort of assessment five through eight, but they're going to look at an area right now, um, they're looking at graphing and what they do with graphs in science. And one of the things they'd like to find information about is we think we know how students increase their knowledge of graphing from grades five through eight, but this will also inform us with a piece of data um, around a particular type of graph that they will need to do and work with, and it's also combined some of their knowledge in mathematics. Social studies is um, looking at um, doing something with American history. Their target grade is grade six because our students do focus on the basic study of American history in grades five and six, and so they're looking to do something with the sixth graders with um, having some choice elements of a particular era in history and then picking out people who are important um, during that time and explaining why they are important. Technology is working with grade five and they're going to be doing a combination of some specific skills that they have learned in their computer classes as well as applying to them to some of the things that they've learned to use the technology in our library um, kind of thing to get some information on do we have that baseline data where we think it is. The math group is really looking at fine-tuning some assessments we've used for several years. Um, they have already improved the test that incoming fourth graders will take who candidate for our accelerated math class in grade five. That test will not be given until May. Um, they are now working on 
um, adding a few components to the transition math test that all of our sixth grade students take and our students who are in accelerated math in grade five also take, as well as other people who would like to candidate for transition math in grade six. And our sixth graders use it for recommendation to either the full year or the two-year program in transition math. And their last target um, activity will be to fine-tune some of the components we've used for an algebra test um, to help students in grades seven and eight determine if that's the right placement for them. The math group is the only group that will not be giving their assessment that March 14th through the April 13th time because they're working with some assessments we've used and trying to um, make them better and include a few more um, activities that would be appropriate at this time. The World Language Team is working on a listening um, activity in Spanish for our grade six students. The music teachers are working, um, going to be targeting grade five, um, and it's going to be a very short kind of lesson that they do. Um, that will be for um, students who play instruments as well as students in classroom music. Our health teachers have another um, thing that will inform them what they've decided, because they don't, they see people on trimesters, what they're going to do is they're going to take one day in health, and they're going to do an assessment with everybody who has health that particular day. And they have some items that they want to check on and see if they are covering to their satisfaction um, and to what they feel they should be covering them in their curriculums. And our students grades five through eight are involved in a health class in some way or form. And in art, um, that's a large committee of one. Susie's the only one who's on that particular committee. And what she's chosen to do, because she works in assessment all the time with the students, is she's really working to refine the response sheets that she gives them back from their work and from their critiques um, and working with those. She's done one already that she did with sixth grade students. And last time, I think she showed us an activity that eighth grade students were doing. So once again, each one is a little bit different, but the important thing and the that I think is good to note is that each one of the groups has chosen something that they value, that they think will inform their practice. From our assessments that we did in the spring, one of the things, several grade levels did some things in grammar, and I know this week the sixth grade language arts teachers have already given the second round of that particular one um, to gather some more information, and that was an assessment that they found. This is doable, it's meaningful, we can include it once a trimester in our rotation and get that information and move forward with it. And I think that's important to remember when sometimes we think, what, so what? We did this and so what? How has it made a difference? Now on the tails of that, uh, just a reminder, as I mentioned before, uh, we will be doing our standardized testing in the mornings, um, March 5th through the 8th, and makeup will be the following week. Now tomorrow night, in case you're wondering what you could do on a Wednesday night in Cape Elizabeth, uh, we are going to be having a variety show. It starts at 7 p.m. Um, it is only about an hour long, and I believe we have about 12 acts. We are hopeful that the weather will cooperate. Um, the weather report I listened to wasn't that positive, um, but we're very hopeful that it will just rain here on the coast because we are running out of evenings to choose to do this. And um, we're really trying to give the performers an opportunity to perform for the public. On Thursday, our eighth grade jazz band will participate in a competition in South Portland. Um, but I'm not sure how open that is to the public. I believe parents whose students are playing can go. And the reason I say that is it's in the afternoon, and we've usually gone over, and our jazz band has had a chance to listen to the other jazz bands play, and then they have performed. The first year, they just did it to see where they were. This is just our third year of a jazz band, uh, so we're relatively new at it. Uh, but this year from South Portland, we got directions that we needed to arrive in time to play, and then we needed to depart immediately, which leads me to believe that there may not have a lot of audience room at this particular function. Um, one of the things we'll be working on right after February break, and um, we'll probably be well started by the time we have our next school board meeting, is our transition for our eighth graders to the high school. And on February 28th, the high school department heads will come down and meet with the eighth grade team. Um, March 5th is the evening that the high school will be hosting the eighth grade students and their parents to explain the high school programs. The snow date for that is March 12th. And on March 16th, as they bring home their 
report cards, eighth grade students will also be bringing home their high school course selection sheets with the recommendations filled out by the eighth grade teachers where that is appropriate. And then there is a one week turnaround time that they need to have them back so we can get them to the high school. So that will be starting up. And then as spring moves forward, um, we will also be getting ready to do some transition activities with the fourth grade as we will continue transition activities with the high school uh, for the eighth grade students. And finally, just a reminder, on April 4th, 5th, and 6th, we do have approximately 150 of our students who will be performing in the production of The Music Man, and we hope some of you can drop by and see that performance. They are all evening performances, um, and hopefully one of those dates will coincide favorably with your calendar. Thank you very much. That's great, Nancy. Any questions? It sounds like a tremendous amount of work, and um, thank you for keep, keeping us updated, and, and I think it will be interesting as um, the results from the assessments come back and you continue to keep us updated. It's great. We appreciate that. Move um, to Tom Pond Cove. Good evening. I, I think I'll begin tonight with a report from the Department of Amateur Epidemiology. We uh, crested at about 90 student absences two weeks ago oh, and wow. we're down around normal today but we're still in the upper 30s and we sent five or six kids home every day. I really appreciate the support we're getting from parents of keeping sick kids at home. I know it's terribly disruptive, but it's been very helpful. Also, nurse Paula Harris and her assistant Barbie Smith have just been stellar in the office, uh, in the nurse's office. They've been cool, calm, and collected, and it's just been very helpful during this time even when they ran out of seats for kids being sent down to, the off, down to their office. So I really appreciate that. About a week and a half ago, we sent home uh, the hard copy versions of the new electronic re report cards. <coughs> Gary Lenoy not only uh, tutored teams uh, last month, but he made himself available after school during the week when teachers were working on this project because they had to do it at school. Um, and he and Jason Lund responded almost immediately to any glitch or problem we discovered in the content or, of course, with the printing. Um, they did a great job. Also, the teaching staff has recommended that I buy a company car for both secretaries, Nancy Angier and Barbara McLean, who help with the data entry and with the uh, printing. Uh, this is the best I could do, as a, as a, unless you want to fund it, is to give them a public thanks. They, do, they did a really nice job. It's good to see people pulling together and showing so much enthusiasm for a new project like that. As Nancy mentioned, we'll be doing our standardized testing again right after, well, in March 5th. We do the California Achievement Test for grade three and the MEAs in math, science, social studies, visual and performing arts this spring. Marla uh, did the logistical work in the fall for this, and she has this all ready to go. And she's done an admirable job getting this done and planning for makeup exams. Um, some good news that I was able to report to uh, PCPA this afternoon, because Elaine will know about this. The um, playground committee is really making a lot of progress with the assistance of landscape architect Pat Carroll. Uh, Pat has gone from some general concepts to more specific uh, suggestions uh, which has caught the committee's favor and he is now ready to uh, make some specific proposals for the Pond Cove and Middle School pl playground. When the snow melts a little more he'll have more to say about the new Fort Williams playground and he has offered to meet with uh, fourth graders. He'll be coming right after vacation to meet with the uh, fourth grade reps Sarah Berman and me then he'll go over and see Carmen at the middle school to meet with uh, Carmen's reps over there. So maybe when warm weather comes, we'll have further good news about the playground. Finally, it's a big week at Pond Cove with 100th Day on Monday and Valentine's Day tomorrow. Well, it's just, uh, you just can't do any better when you're a little kid at Pond Cove. So, any questions? Also, spring training starts next week, so what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> Life can't be all bad. <laughs> questions for Tom? Thank you very much. That's a good update. We're going to move on now to our uh, committee reports. We'll start with the um, Finance Subcommittee, which met this evening. Pauline found out tonight that we don't kill the messenger. Uh, the Finance Committee met and um, received some 
news, not thrilling news. Uh, as you all know, we, uh, we are having a real winter for a change, unlike what we've had for the past few years. It has been colder, and despite our best efforts, uh, we're over budget in heating and electric, uh, heating to the tune of 21000 and uh, electric to the tune of $26,000. So followed uh, by the news, uh, by Pauline's update on uh, general purpose aid funding, uh, the uh, finance committee uh, was not a happy place to be tonight. Hmm. And that's essentially, other than that, it was uh, simply general discussion and uh, the homework of signing uh, warrants. And uh, we'll be meeting again prior to the uh, next school board meeting. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. Um, Jennifer, <coughs> policy subcommittee. Um, policy uh, committee met last Wednesday, February 7th, and we reviewed and discussed various athletic policies from other school districts and some sample policies from uh, MSMA. Our next meeting will be Wednesday, March 7th at 12 noon in the student conference room, and we'll continue our discussions on athletic policy. Okay, thank you. Planning um, subcommittee, Marie? Um, the pl planning committee met for the first time on um, February 3rd and heard from um, five major areas that are represented in the budget, such as technology, it, they listened to Gary Lenoy, the maintenance plan, um, Ernie McVeigh and Pauline, and uh, Tom did staffing and future directions and Sue Steinman um, reported on facilities. So all of those areas were heard by the whole committee as to what their plans are um, for the next few years. That committee will then take that information, digest it, come back this Friday with whatever questions they have, and hopefully we will be able to wrap it up and have um, in some format for the next five years to give the school board a picture of the dollars that will be needed in each of those major areas um, so that we can all keep that in the back of our minds as to what's coming up in the future. And, and that meeting is um, this Friday, uh, the 16th at 9.30. Great, thank you very much. We're going to move on to unfinished business, and this is consideration of a rec recommendation from the facilities committee. And Marie? Okay. Um, last month, um, the facilities committee, we had presented um, our findings and our work um, together as a committee and with SMRT. And I'd like to just, you know, review that for everyone yep. um, before we make a motion. And uh, what we talked about last month was to accommodate the kindergarten, to give the uh, elementary school the much needed flexible space, um, which would take that building, or have an addition to that building of about 13,000 square feet at the Pine Cove building, um, and to renovate um, and update our 30-year-old high school. Uh, which has never been done. The total cost of these recommendations, if approved by the school board, will be between four and five million dollars. Um, we are suggesting that this project will go to referendum in the spring of 2002 and that uh, construction of the kindergarten space and the remodeling of the high school would then begin in July of 2003. Um, everyone received a book from SMRT with all of the findings, all of the data, and all of the specific details um, in that. And this is just a summary of what that was. Mm -hmm. Is there any conversation or questions? I don't think so. I think we're, we've uh, we had an opportunity at the last meeting uh, with your presentation as well as the written material uh, to review uh, the recommendation that was coming forth to the um, uh, school board and 
And so I think uh, people had an opportunity to go through that. Um, we will also take questions as part of the, the, the process here. So if you put forward a motion. Okay. So I would like to make a motion that the school board will request from town council to take this project to referendum um, in the spring of 2002. Okay. Um, I need a second. Susan, thank you. Um, any questions or comments before we move ahead on this move uh, motion for uh, accepting the recommendations? Yes. I, sh I should just say before the vote that I have recused myself from discussion and voting on this issue. And I don't know if it's proper or necessary for me to explain my recusal. Why, why don't you just do, just do that real quickly? Okay. Uh, I recuse myself because I uh, own and operate a building material supply business that has an extensive history in providing materials for public projects here in town and uh, to school projects in particular. Uh, I, my company provided steel framing and drywall and related materials to the Pond Cove Middle School renovation to the uh, renovation in the 30s building, both the third floor and the basement, the Richards Pool. Those are the most recent projects. Um, the specific policy in our school board policy manual that deals with conflict of interest um, is very explicit about avoiding situations where there is even a, an appearance of conflict of interest. And while I would not contract uh, specifically with the town or with the school department if this project uh, passes referendum, there certainly might be an appearance of a conflict of interest should my company provide materials for the project down the road. So that's the basis of my recusal. That's good. And I'm, I'm glad you had the opportunity to, to explain that because it's important. Um, okay, so thank you, Jim. Um, all those in favor? I think we have six with one recusing. Um, so we'll move forward. Marie, just explain kind of um, what the plan is. Okay. Um, I would like to be able to form um, a project committee that would, would um, work from now until the time that the, re that the referendum um, is put out there um, to specifically communicate with the community, with the public, of all of the, the details of, of what we are doing. And I think it's important that um, we communicate and communicate you know, openly and honestly with everyone in this community as to what this project um, entails and exactly what we need. And it, it doesn't need to be a large committee. I, you know, it can be three or four or five people. Um, and basically, it would be, you know, marketing this project, writing um, articles for the Cape Courier, or maybe our own pamphlet that, that we would get out there. Um, but if there are any school board members who, who would like to be part of this, um, that would be wonderful. And I would love to hear from anyone else who would like to be part. Um, there's been a tremendous amount of work that's been done in terms of uh, preparation of this recommendation coming forth. And needless to say, board members have been kept apprised all the way through. Um, Maria has done a, a terrific job um, along with the rest of the committee members in, in terms of really working very diligently to sort through a number of historical issues as well as current needs to come up with um, the recommendation and hence um, basically uh, passing unanimous, un unanimously and having the unanimous support of the, of the school board. Um, there are a lot of um, uh, uh, misunderstandings out there about what was accomplished um, the last time that renovations were done uh, in the schools. Um, uh, sort of um, some sense that everything was fixed and that we would be fine and dandy for a number of years, not recognizing that, in fact, uh, for example, the high school um, has not had, um, uh, other than a, a good maintenance program and, and, uh, and uh, s sort of uh, facility maintenance along the way, but has never uh, been updated or been renovated in, in, in any sort of way, um, as well as recognizing uh, the needs in terms of flexible space, the fact that we educate children differently um, uh, today than we did five years ago, than we did uh, five years before that, et cetera. Um, and so there is a tremendous amount of education that's needed. And when the story is told and the details are examined, um, there's a very compelling argument um, to move ahead and certainly to have this referendum 
um, pass. So I, just, I guess I wanted to just say that I, I think that it's absolutely essential um, that there be uh, some folks that usher this through to the referendum and, and that we ensure that the right, you say marketing, the right edu public education um, is done. So is there anyone on the board who has uh, feelings about this proposal? It's not a, anything that requires formal action. I think that. Um, about working on it? Um, about working on it or, or any, any direction to this, to this committee that we need to provide? And the, uh, let me just make sure the rest of the board is supportive of, of moving forward with this also. But I suggest that um, at our next meeting, if, um, if, if we could develop a, um, a recommended charge for the project committee and maybe uh, potential makeup of what kinds of people might need to be on that, mm -hmm. and we could bring that to the board. That would be good. So in the meantime, people can l let you know if they're interested. You can kind of uh, uh, pull, begin to pull that together and, um, and, uh, and go from there. That's good. Um, okay, we're going to move on to new business and consideration of the superintendent's recommendation to a co-curricular fee position. I'd like to recommend uh, Chaya Karen as the spring semester art club advisor at the high school. Okay, Kevin. I move that we accept the superintendent superintendent's recommendation for the co-curricular co fee <laughs> position as uh, described. Okay. Need a second? Second. Jim, thanks. Um, questions or comments? The resume is in the packet. Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. Uh, consideration of the superintendent's nominations to administrative positions for 2001-2002. As you are aware, um, each year at this time, administra administrators um, need to be uh, nominated uh, to a contract for the employment for the, for the following year. And last year when I did this, um, I was in the position for about a half a year, um, but I've found and, and wanted to take the opportunity, um, a group that has worked very hard, um, not only in, in their jobs, but as becoming a, a cohesive group. Um, and I think as a, as a leadership team in the district, um, I can say that we, we are very fortunate to have these individuals uh, working here in the schools, uh, they put in countless hours, and, and I think a lot of progress is, is being made in all of our schools. So with that being said, I'd like to nominate to the following <coughs> positions for the 2001-2002 school year. Uh, Tom Eismeyer, Pond Cove School Principal, Nancy Hutton, Principal, uh, Cape Elizabeth Middle School, Peter Dawson, Principal at the high school. Assistant Principals, Marla Bono at Pond Cove School, Carmen Melito at the middle school, and Dwight Ely at the high school. District-wide positions, Claire Labrie, Director of Special Education, Paulina Portria, Business Manager, Gary Lenoy, Technology Coordinator, Keith Weatherby, three-quarter time Athletic Administrator, and Sue Weatherby as Community Services Director. Okay, thank you, Tom. Um, I need a motion. I would move that we confirm the superintendent's nominations to administrative positions for the 2001-2002 year. Second, Marie, thank you. Comments or questions from the board? I would just, I, I guess I'd just say on behalf of the board, um, we, we are just so fortunate to have such extraordinary, um, such an extraordinary team um, that really leads uh, the educational efforts for this community. Um, we, should, we should be very proud. I know that um, I've worked um, with this team for a number of years now and um, have uh, just uh, found them to be top-notch professionals, very dedicated, um, and uh, as a leadership team, they're are, are very capable and, and, and very, um, uh, we're, we're just very fortunate to have uh, this team pulled together. So it's a, it's, it's a pleasure for us to now take a vote. Um, all those in favor? 7-0. Um, before we adjourn uh, this evening's meeting, let me just review very quickly some dates to remember. The school board workshop meeting is coming up 
um, in a couple of weeks, Tuesday, February 27th at 7 p.m. Um, and we will be talking about the budget. Um, school board budget workshop on Saturday, March 3rd. This is our all-day event. Um, starting at 8.30 in the morning and going to about 3.30 in the afternoon. And the topic um, in the council chambers right here will be the school budget. Um, policy subcommittee meeting, as Jen said earlier, Wednesday, March 7th at noontime in the Jordan, uh, William Jordan Conference Room. Finance subcommittee meeting on March 13th, which will be at 6.30 in the conference room, and that precedes the regular school board meeting at 7.30 here in the chambers. And with that said, um, our business is done for this evening, and thank you very much.